Hey, what's happening, everybody? I'm Larry Roberts, and this is another episode of the Readily Random Podcast. Hey, you could be larger than life, bigger than the world, living out the hopes and dreams of every boy and every girl. Hey, you could fly high in the sky. What is happening, everybody? Larry Roberts back in the house with another awesome episode of the Readily Random Podcast. You guys, you know that that intro there, the intro itself is is old or older. It's it's commonly used, but you know, I just started using a pre-recorded version of it. And I got to tell you, it's a little tough for me to sit back and not be excited about starting another episode when fake me is already excited about it, you know? So I mean, I don't like faking it. So I might have to kill that. Just go back to the music and old Lair talking to you as we start each and every episode. I don't know. You guys tell me if that's something that you you prefer me or you prefer fake me. I don't know. Uh, sometimes I think my wife prefers fake me because it's quieter. You know, I don't talk as much. But hey, today we've got an awesome episode. Uh, we're going to talk about ways to energize ourselves and have more energy day to day. And But we're going to do it without all those. As you all know, uh, I'm a huge fan of monsters and I just crushed the can with monsters. And matter of fact, here I'm gonna put it in perspective. Uh, Monster just ran this this uh, promotion where you can turn in your your caps to your cans and buy product with Monster caps. And although I missed the Cat Daddy prize by X number of caps, I'm ready to buy two of the best prizes next time they launch already. And this was like, I don't know, six weeks ago, eight weeks ago, something like that. It was crazy. Couldn't believe it. I filled up a whole coffee cup with monster tabs. That's wild, but I love them. I'm sorry. You know, I got sober for Christ's sake. I can't go caffeine free too, or can I? So what can nature science and our global access to different ingredients tell us about optimal productivity, creativity, and mood? And which ingredients are scientifically proven to be both effective and safe? You guys are always telling me those monsters aren't safe. So how do you get more out of your morning routine? And best of all, what's real? What's overhyped? Unscientific bullshit. Pardon the language. That's what it says on the website. I don't know. I got to read it. I got to. No, actually, it's censored out on the website. I, I just added that for my own sake. But hey, today we're going to talk about a sustainable guide. We're going to talk about a book called Beyond Coffee, which is a sustainable guide to nootropics, adaptogens, and mushrooms. I don't know if it's those mushrooms or not, but if it is, I mean, I'll give it a shot. I've never tried them before, but hey. But hey, we got the author of author of that book with us here today, and that is Mr. James Bashara. James, thank you so very much for being patient with that extra long intro. And no, I loved it, Larry. I loved it. <laughs> Great to be on. So tell us, man, what 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 are we talking about here? You went out in the in the wilderness there. You're in San Francisco now. Would you you head up to Oregon and 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 go through the forest, just start eating things and go, oh, this is good. Ah, that kind of hurt my tummy. How did you come to uh, to determine all that's, these wonderful things? That's right. Well, I wandered the wilderness for seven years, trying all kinds of different things, and what I returned with was this book. Wow. After that seven year vision quest. And no, I'm just kidding. I'll tell you the dude, you had the to hook actual, line and sinker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's you set it up pretty well. And <laughs> I, you already have the you have such a great vibe about you. And I was listening to some of your episodes before this. I was like, man, you know, I think I could actually be a little more playful with, with this one versus some of the more scientific, scientifically driven podcasts that really just want to dive into you know, the footnotes and, and a lot of the research, which we'll get to, but yeah, I want to hear um, both. I'm so. looking, I'm looking forward to uh, this being a little bit more, a little higher energy, uh, which is very appropriate for the topic. And right. Then, real quick though, I've got to say that might be the most creative use of a coffee mug I've ever heard of <laughs> to, to basically keep all of the tabs to your monster energy drinks. And the fact that you drink so many, you filled up an entire coffee mug. How many uh, how many cans of Monster does that is that equate to? Man, I take to work, and I, I'm not always caught up, but I take to work every day. Uh, I buy them by the case from Amazon, get them delivered to the casa. I just I, I drink too many not to buy them by the case, and mm-hmm. uh, I take four a day to the office. 
And we're oh talking, my, we're wow. talking, the, you know, and I drink the white ones, the white textured can. So it's, uh, it's calorie free and sugar free, but at the same time, it's still, it's not monster free. Yeah. The, is that the tall boys? Like the tall boy monster, four of those? No, not the not, not the real, not the big mouth ones. You know, they're like thirty two okay. ounces. I'm talking just the regular. I, but even that, man. Let's be honest. I think the regular can's twenty ounces. Okay, well, I I want you to try something, try something out for me, and that is on Amazon. Order Hustle by Ma- Matcha Bar. It's a canned matcha green tea drink, and it's got plenty of caffeine. It'll it'll light you up. Hustle. But what it has in it is matcha which is the ground up green tea leaves. And it has, so it has more caffeine than regular green tea. And anyone you know listening at home, they could actually make regular matcha too, uh, which is the powder that you add to a cup and you swish it around and it's the, uh, the green tea leaves ground up. But matcha bar makes a great carbonated matcha drink that is all natural. It's organic. It is amazing green tea. But what is great about matcha, and this is in the book as well, as an alternative to coffee, and don't get me wrong, coffee is good too in, in appropriate uh, dosages. But what matcha, what matcha has is uh, matcha is made up of green tea that obviously has caffeine in it, but it also has what are called catechins and L-theanine. L-theanine, and by the way, I'll give you the whole story of why I know all this, why I even wrote this book with my, with my co-authors who are both of them are much smarter than myself, but but I did want to just use this as a as a chance to tell you that you should try switching for thirty days because one that l theanine that naturally comes with matcha will help calm you down throughout the day. It helps caffeine just in pure caffeine, especially uh, when mixed with sugar. It'll spike your cortisol levels as if you are swerving to avoid an accident in traffic. It is that powerful of an acute stress on your system. So the caffeine with L-theanine and matcha will actually calm you down because L-theanine will dial your cortisol down. And the caffeine, the most recent recent research has shown that the caffeine and matcha will bind to these really complex molecules that are just naturally in the matcha, which are called catechins, which makes it harder for the body to metabolize, which ultimately extends its release. It's basically nat- nature's matcha is nature's time-release caffeine. And if you really like the convenience of the can, then matcha bar on Amazon, it's the best best way to get matcha for like a ready to drink type of canned drink. So that's a little nugget for you. All and, right. Well, here, I'm looking at I it right to... now on Amazon and I'm about to hit buy. So okay. I'm, I'm doing it right Please. this second. I can do a screen cap and show you. I don't want the subscription yet, though. I just want to do it one time. So I'm going to buy now. The button's clicked. And please do personally reach back out after a month of trying it. And I bet you'll end up drinking less of these per day because the caffeine actually will last much longer, last twice as long as as a cup of coffee. Because anyone knows, you chug a cup of coffee, and in your for many people, the co- the caffeine will be metabolized in forty five minutes, and it'll still be in your system for six hours. But you know you're losing the kick after an hour and a half, right. after two hours, right. and uh, and then you need another cup and another cup. All the while, it's spiking your cortisol, your stress hormones in the background. And it's, uh, yeah, there is a, there is, as they say, there is no biological free lunch. So each thing that gives you a boost, it is having some type of cost on the back end. And, and the book, I guess it's a decent segue into the book, which is all about, okay, how do you get the most upside with the limited, limited downside of all of the different compounds that nature gives us for productivity? Cool deal. So how, let's talk about that more. So how you in, even ended up on the quest, how, how did you end up on, on this path to lead you to writing a book about it and, and even realizing eh, what I'm doing, maybe my intake isn't quite what it's supposed to be. Maybe I'm not supposed to be drinking this much coffee. What made you yeah. realize that? Yeah. So the, the uh, vision quest, so to speak, was, was, uh, into the wilderness wasn't, uh, wasn't uh, literal, but somewhat metaphorical. Six years ago, I was diagnosed with a heart condition and went into to see my doctor and went through a litany of questions, finally got to the question of, and and how much caffeine do you consume each day, James? And and I told him I was drinking five. I I still use the phrase five to seven cups a day because I don't want to freak people out by just saying seven. 
<laughs> and and so when I it's that was a a little uh, I don't know a little piece of information that I discovered maybe two or three weeks ago. Where I was like, James, why do you say five to seven? You know, it was seven. And and I knew it back then. It was seven. I was drinking about seven cups of coffee a day, running a company that I'd founded and started that built to about fifty employees and. And just felt like I needed seven cups of coffee a day, and my uh, my doctor just nodded as if he just knew exactly like that was the culprit, or he just wasn't surprised. And and my heart condition is a, an irregular heartbeat, and he basically said, and my heart had been beating for 170 beats per minute for about three weeks before I went in, and. I would subsequently go to the ER and and have a what's called a cardioversion, which is basically like you know from the the TV shows or movies, the little metal paddles that are put on your chest, and you get shocked back into a regular heart rhythm. That's how dire the situation was. And in the con- in the conversation, I'd say out of everything that that was said and and processed that day, one of the things was maybe the scariest thing for me to hear. And and he said. You know, James, you with your condition, you really shouldn't have more than 80 milligrams of caffeine a day. And and you should really practice, uh, pick up some type of stress management practice, like breathing exercises, like meditation. And I was like, okay, okay, yeah, I can totally do it. How many cups of coffee is 80 milligrams of caffeine? And he said, that's about a half a cup. And I, I mean, I, the blood drained out of my face and I was like, there's no way. Like I had to stop the whole train to tell him, I was like, you know, there's no way I can get by on half a cup of coffee a day. And part of this was obviously, you know, people can feel the effects the stimulant effects of, of caffeine. You know, it's, anyone can, can feel those right on, uh, after chugging the cup. So part of it was the caffeine obviously helping with, uh, with energy, not knowing the biological cost had. Part of it was just psychological, just feeling like, no, no, I need that. that. That's my that's my anchor for the day to get me through 15 meetings and and whatever whatever the day threw at me. And um, and so a, a few minutes later, he said, you know, you should try. Come to think of it, you should try green tea. This actually brings it full circle to the the matcha plug. And it's uh, and by the way, I love matcha bar so much. The company matcha bar so much. That I reach out to them to, and ask to invest. So I'm the tiniest little investor in them. I'll make nothing off of your cans, but it's because they made the best ready to drink version of of this green tea. But he said, the doctor said, James, have you have you tried um, green tea? It has this stuff in it called L-theanine, and it will extend your absorption of caffeine over over a longer period of time. And I didn't know. I never, I never really considered green tea. Had no idea what L-theanine was, and so just in the back of my mind, this thought was lodged in my head that there's this stuff called L-thea something that, when added to caffeine, can make it more effective in its you know, purported goal to make me, you know, give me energy or get me through the day. And so that single thought was the beginning of of all of the next six years of going down the rabbit hole of okay, what else can I add? synergistically. I didn't even know that term at the time. It was just kind of what else could I add to my morning drink to give me more energy or spread out throughout the day? How do I go from seven cups of coffee to half a cup of coffee or the caffeine equivalent of half a cup of coffee and get through a very demanding day? And it took me probably six months just to work out. Uh, It was definitely not immediate. But um, after about six months, I kind of got a handle on on a few things, and then another five and a half years later, I got today. I have a morning concoction of of twelve different things that that I add to my my morning routine that helps me give me ex, you know extremely productive energy throughout the day and and really creative flow. Hence, writing this book earlier this year and and publishing it. So coming from a guy that has had over the years very little overall faith in quote unquote natural remedies or natural uh, stimulants or really natural anything. Okay. I've taken everything you can take to try to, you know, get better. That was not natural, whether Mm -hmm. it be from trying to be a better athlete or whether it was trying to be a better person or whether it's trying to be a worse person, but with alcohol or whatever it may be. And over the last six years, sober, 
And coming out of my, uh, coming into my sobriety, I had done a shit ton of damage to my body and to the point Mm. where every joint just was excruciating. And I had to Mm. find some way to, to get by. And even today, I still take inordinate amounts of painkillers, um, not prescription per se, some are prescription, but mostly I take, um, about, it it varies day to day, but between, uh, what, eight and 12 Tylenol and eight and 12 ibuprofen a day. Mm -hmm. Now eight and 12. Yes. So I take, I take four in the morning, four at night of both for sure. And then I have, yeah, that's 12, right? Four, yes, 12. So between eight and 12 of each. Uh, and, Mm -hmm. uh, it just depends on how bad my pain is, but here's where I'm going with this is that after I started taking, and this is just recently. Okay. And I fought this for six years using elevators to go up to the second floor. That's why I'm massive. Now I used to be very skinny, but I started (sighs) taking fish oil along with turmeric and great. The combination of the two has made me functional again. Now, again, I still take all the Tylenol and the ibuprofen. I never have a middle-of-the-day episode, though, so I never take those four and four at lunch. So I do take the four and four in the morning, four and four at night, and we're working towards getting that out of the picture as well because this is relatively a relatively new discovery. But even in learning just those two natural uh, what do you call them? Elements? I don't know. They're not elements. Uh, compounds. Compounds. There we go. Perfect. I like that. See, you're smart. I'm just a podcast guy. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, no, I, I, if I don't have no, if I don't have answers for for questions like that, then no one should buy this book. There you go. That's, so, well, I, I haven't. I, the only book I wrote was on podcasting, and I can answer any question that you might have. So yeah, there we go. But anyway, my point was is that you know I have learned, and my take on. Uh, natural compounds has changed dramatically since then. And even in the short amount of time that I've been doing it, I kicked in an additional diet. I got off all the BS, doing the 1,200 calorie a day thing, clean calories, raw veggies, all that kind of stuff. Not all the time, but mostly it's a liquid diet mixed with raw veggies and just a hint of chicken. But yeah, I feel tremendously better. I've shed like 30 pounds. I mean, all these, and it's all natural, right? I'm doing everything the natural way. So as I get older, maybe a little bit wiser, uh, I'm seeing that natural may be the way to go after all. It's I think that's well, it's fantastic progress for yourself, and I think for everyone, you know, proof of the pudding's in the eating, and it's um, you try it, and then does it work? And I think one of the the amazing things about you know these natural remedies, and this is you know 30 years ago, natural could have been you know natural but uninformed, might as well. I have a 50% chance of being snake oil. But now natural and 10 minutes online, 20 minutes online, a great resource is, is, a resource is examine.com, which really breaks down uh, research studies to a, a very digestible level, very readable level. You can look and see, okay, hey, I'm hearing a lot about fish oils or omega-3s. And, and you can look up the research on it and say, well, shit, okay, this is pretty... This is pretty convincing research. That's actually omega threes. Has been, it's one of the first compounds that I uh, discuss in the book for its cognitive enhancing properties. So the entire book and and the Beyond Coffee angle is is around productivity and getting into creative flow. Nootropics is this body of of compounds that that give you cognitive improvement or or purport to give you cognitive enhancement. Half of the uh, half of the compounds that the book covers on the nootropics category um, are uh, we, w- me and the co-authors, uh, one of the smartest doctors in the space, Dan Engel, and one of the smartest medical researchers in the space, Catherine Haynes. The three of us would say about thirteen out of the twenty-five nootropics covered, you shouldn't take. Uh, it's just whether wow. they're ineffective, whether they're you know total hype, or whether they're actively harmful for you, you shouldn't take. But there are twelve that are right at the intersection of efficacy and, and safety. They're, they're safe and effective. Omega-3s are great for joints. They're also great for cognitive um, repair for people that have had concussive in- injuries. They're neuroregenerative. It's, uh, the, the research around omega-3s, fish oils, just keeps coming out that, that they're really, really special and at the right dosages. The, every once in a while, there's, and this is, this is, an interesting kind of like 
inside baseball this of this stuff is I found that every once in a while there's a study that will come out and disprove this supplement or disprove that supplement. And you look at the dosages. So let's say you uh, the studies for two decades come out that say, hey, you should everyone should get 800 milligrams of X for some effect. There will be a study that'll come out every few years. Someone will, someone, and I don't know who's, I, I honestly think sometimes it's pharmaceutical companies that will pay the, the $30,000, $50,000 for a clinical study with, instead of 800 milligrams, with 50 milligrams to prove that fish oil doesn't work. But the dosages, you look at the study, you actually look at the, the study itself, and the dosages are so ridiculously small, you wonder who the hell wanted to pay the money to, uh, to put this out there. Because obviously, these, anyone could have said these dosages were not going to have an effect. But then it, it gets fed into, um, I don't know, the Twitter sphere, the news uh, cycle that X supplement doesn't work. But what it's really saying is X supplement at a very tiny dosage. Uh, doesn't work. So that's something to that. I think it's, um, you know, people will send me studies that will say like omega threes, fish oils, you know, it, it looks like they were disproven. And then I'll literally send it right back to them and say, well, that has one eighth the recommended dosage. So obviously it's not going to have the effect. Okay. Done with that rant. <laughs> Getting back to, um, to what you're talking about in terms of just natural solutions to to some of these really common things, whether it is inflammation and pain, and the book talks about covers inflammation and anti-inflammatories like turmeric. So omega threes and turmeric are, are both covered in the book. And the first thing that comes to mind is is my own observation with this stuff. Six years ago, I thought, okay, if there's anything better than coffee, with seven billion people in the world, we'd know it. Like, what are the odds that there's something? It's just it is obvious that coffee is is the best thing for energy. You know that nature has given us for energy because you know, out of seven billion people, eighty percent of the world consumes coffee or tea every morning. Like, what are the chances that these random other things like CDP choline or bacopa monary are are legit? Fast forward six years, now I think the opposite is true. Like, what are the odds that we figured it out four hundred years ago and two hundred years ago as Americans kind of mainstream adoption of coffee? What are the odds? We just figured it out 200 years ago. End all be all of energy is this one coffee at, or, or tea plant. And it is, that's it. That's the only thing nature gives us. And, and now I actually think it's the opposite is true. That it, it is obvious that in the 21st century, we're going to come up with something that is more complete. Uh, that is more than just energy because productivity is more than just energy. It's also cognition improve focus, improve memory, improve clarity. Uh, it's balance, it's less stress, less anxiety. We're going to come, nature has so much more to offer than just coffee or tea. And we're going to come up with, with unique concoctions of, of many different, many different compounds that nature gives us that, that I think will, will make for a, a much more productive, balanced day for all of us. And maybe it's, who knows when this stuff becomes more mainstream adopted? Maybe it's 2035 or 2055, but I do not foresee a world a few years from now, 20 years from now, where we're all just drinking coffee every morning. That just doesn't, after doing all the research, that seems as laughably ridiculous as how I felt six years ago when I was like, I don't know, this stuff, Bacopa Mineri, come on, improves your memory. There's, there's no way this is legit because everybody would be taking it if, if it was. And it turns out it's very legit and we've known it for 30 years and it's been in, intensively rigorously studied and, and proven. It just, it's not branded very well and takes a while before a culture starts to adopt these, these kinds of things. Yeah, I think that's the tough part, but I think you also, you just proved your point in that uh, it definitely helps with, with your memory at least because you, you can remember how to say the word. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because I mean, I, uh, exactly. Uh, cocoberry, I don't know. But yes, I think you're right. I think a lot of it too is we should go back in time, maybe, I don't know, to the 20s or something when cocaine was more mainstream. I think that would be a, a great addition <laughs> well, too. There, there are some people that uh, that we chatted with uh, in, in writing the book that, that actually are fans of the coca plant. 
Um, so <laughs> Bet they are. They, and we don't, and we don't talk about anything illicit in the book and, and the mushrooms are all medicinal mushrooms and not psych, not of the psychedelic variety, but it's, um, we really should go back and revisit a lot of, a lot of different compounds that, that we've known about or that we have heard about, but it's, uh, it just kind of is just like, oh, that's, that's interesting. That'll improve memory or turmeric, for example, turmeric, obviously we've known about for thousands of years. It's in many Indian dishes and it's a, and it's great. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a great root that's related to ginger and, and it's tasty. But you add black pepper to it, uh, which has piperine in it, and it and it allows your body to absorb it not as a as a spice, but absorb it as an anti-inflammatory. So if you have arthritis, if you have a, a sports injury, if you have inflammation from many of us have inflammation from you know low grade allergies that we have, whether it's a low grade allergy to a food that we just consume all the time, we don't realize that we're allergic to dairy. Which many people are, or it's you know pollen in the air. Turmeric is incredibly effective as anti-inflammatory, and it's super cheap. It's you know like eighty cents a pound. But we are kind of conditioned to think, oh no, no, Claritin is what I need, or oh no, 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 I need Advil. Uh, it's what are the odds that turmeric could be this spice could be helpful for for this hurt knee? I need Advil. But the truth is, turmeric has been proven incre- very effective, almost as effective as Advil, not quite as effective, but almost as effective as Advil as an anti-inflammatory. And it has none of the downsides that ibuprofen has on our liver and, and that biological cost. It's also uh, about two years ago, turmeric was proven to be as effective as Prozac for antidepressant and anti-anxiety conditions. So it is, that, it, and that's been absolutely proven and proven as you know, much safer than something like Prozac. It doesn't have the side effects that uh, SSRIs often come with. That right there, and that's mentioned in the book and, and covered in the book, but that right there, turmeric, this commonplace natural compound as effective as, as Prozac, it is, that's just one of a number of these properties of these compounds that's sitting right in front of our face it just doesn't have the commercial it doesn't have the commercial rationale for for people to go out there and spend 50 million 100 million dollars to push turmeric like a pharmacology or a, a pharmaceutical company has with with something like prozac but like i said natural and uninformed meaning natural and we don't know it 30 40 years ago is very different than i think these natural remedies or natural approaches and in the information that we all have at our fingertips that I think is going to, it's just going to be a springtime for us going after these very effective and very safe alternatives to, to what be, what might be, you know, prescribed by your doctor in 2019 uh, and 2025. We'll look back and say, God, that was, that was awful, especially given that we have this natural alternative that is, that has none of the, the side effects, none of the downsides. Do you think there's suppression of the education in in regards to these compounds as compared there's, to the massive lobbying that takes place? Uh, I don't. For the rest? Yeah, I don't. I don't know if there's a suppression of the information because uh, you know we're a week into this book and it's and it's an Amazon bestseller, which is which is great to see. But it's uh, and people are and we were able to find the information pretty easily and stack up all the two uh, over there's over 240 studies cited in the in the short read and just for the the listeners at home it's you know it's a very short read you can you can read it in 45 minutes an hour it's less than five bucks and and it really started as you know the my journey in this space started six years ago with the story that i told you my journey with the book started about a year and a half ago i just within san francisco and within silicon valley where i'm a a full-time investor and and podcast host for uh, my own podcast called Below the Line, if listeners want to check it out, it is a um, it's just this passion project or this this strange world that I knew a lot about, and people would continually ask me, friends would ask me, friends of friends would ask me, wives of friends would ask me, husbands of friends would ask me about this stuff, and I finally got like 
to my wits end of writing these individual emails to people on why they shouldn't take this or why they should check this out instead. And instead, okay, I'm going to write this, all of my, all of the information that I have uh, acquired over the last six years, I'm going to write it all down in one long blog post. That long blog post then became a five part long blog post. And then I was like, okay, screw it. I'm just going to do this right. And I'm going to recruit my friends, Dan Angle and, and Catherine Haynes to help write, turn this into an actual ebook. And then the, the publishers liked it so much, they turned it into a physical book. But it started with just answering all of these questions and being like, okay, this stuff isn't that complicated. Let me just put it all in one place that, that tries to hit on both concise and comprehensive. And, and when readers you know, read it, it's, it's no great Gatsby. It's not this amazing narrative arc, but it is a very layman built list of the different compounds and which are safe, which are effective and, uh, and which ones, you know, do we recommend taking and which ones do we recommend not taking? But yeah, so it's, that is, you know, where it's, where it started And my background has nothing to do with this stuff in the startup world, but it's, um, it's certainly in the startup world is where there's, I think the antennas have, have been up the most in terms of, okay, how can I get a little bit more of an edge? How can I optimize my energy? And it's certainly, you know, here in, in San Francisco, it's certainly right at the, you know, wellspring of just the information. Everybody is, there are Google group or Facebook groups around nootropics. There are WhatsApp groups around nootropics. There's Reddit, subreddits around nootropics. So that is the long-winded way of saying, I don't think it's suppressed information, but I do think it's, it is not actively promoted information. And, and there just is not a commercial interest like a, you know, a pharmaceutical company, if they have to spend a, a billion dollars, and this is, this is the typical journey, if they have to spend a billion dollars to bring a, a product to market, they're definitely going to, they're definitely going to put in a hundred million dollars to market it. They're going to bid 200 million, $300 million to market it. There isn't an entity out there that has that much writing on making sure you and I know about turmeric. Or making sure you and I know about Bacopa Moneri. If you are a Alzheimer's focused uh, pharmaceutical company, or you're trying to work on an Alzheimer's medicine, you might incorporate Bacopa Moneri. In fact, you likely would incorporate Bacopa Moneri, but you're gonna you're gonna name it Bacantrix, and you're gonna market that. You're not gonna tell anyone that it's this three thousand year old herb from India that is is one of the main active ingredients. All right. Wow. That is a lot to digest, honestly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is. Like I said, it was six years ago. It was like, you know, there's, if it, there was anything better than, than coffee, we'd know about it. And, and today there is just so much to digest. And that's, and that's the other reason of writing the book. There's just, it's all piecemeal scattered throughout the web. And, and we felt like there really needed to be one resource that was simple but comprehensive and and broke these things down for for people and yeah it blows people's minds when they hear something like i mean i could list off my my favorite takeaways from the book well i won't list all of them because i want people to buy it but i'll list off a few of them that are right up there with with turmeric being proven as effective as prozac if you want me to sure fire away okay so the the first thing that i'll say is when it comes to these, uh, what the, in the medical community would be called exogenous compounds, basically external consumables like medicine, like a natural herb. When it comes to these things, you know, there is no magic pill that you just you take in the morning and then you have amazing energy and there's no downside to it. And there is no cup of anything, tea, coffee, that, that gives you that. And honestly, viewing energy and productivity from the lens of Okay, it's just something that I pop into my body and then I'm I'm good to go. Really misses, I think, the the larger point of that I had to learn the hard way, which was balance and approaching life with balance. So the beginning of the book covers this, but it's everyone should think about it in terms of a list of five things when it comes to productivity and getting into creative flow. And these exogenous compounds is fifth on the list. It's last on the list. The first thing is sleep, the second thing is diet. The third thing is exercise. The fourth thing is stress management. 
Sleep, the biggest pro tip I ever learned, whether it's reading endless amount of literature on sleep or uh, visiting with sleep doctors, the biggest thing I ever learned is waking up every morning at the same time. Your circadian rhythm is 24 hours. It's not circadian rhythm of the eight hours while you're asleep. It's 24 hours and waking up every morning at the same time is one of the best ways to set that 24 hour circadian rhythm instead of you know yo-yoing at 9 a.m. One, one day, 11 a.m. the next. Second is diet. Anything more than uh, two drinks of alcohol in an evening will really mess with your sleep. And this is super easy for anyone to, uh, to see if they buy a sleep tracker. It's, uh, it's actually, you know, the visuals will just prove it better than, you know, me handing you a bunch of literature ever would. Your, your sleep quality will, it will have if you get four drinks of, of alcohol. So you're basically, you might still be in bed, quote unquote, eight hours but the quality of your sleep will be 50% what it would have been if you didn't have that, that alcohol. So the biggest thing within diet, yes, whole foods and things like that are great, but the biggest thing is, is actually for productivity is actually limiting your alcohol intake. On exercise, three, to, three times a week of 20 to 30 minutes of a strenuous aerobic exercise, and that doesn't need to be like you know hands on your knees about to throw up strenuous exercise, but elevated heart rate, for 20 to 30 minutes, three times a week. One of the best ways of improving your cognitive performance, it's actually exercise like that is better than any compound we found under the sun, including coffee for, uh, for cognitive performance. So how you would do on a you know, memory test or arithmetic test, exercise is, uh, is phenomenal, better than anything. It's like, it is... If you take anything away from the book, it, it could be these things that aren't the compounds. So that's exercise. Last is stress management and breath work or meditation practice or gratitude practice. These are really easy ways to get rid of the obstacles in the road for, for your productivity. And then fifth, last but, but not least, and 90% of the book being dedicated to it is these uh, a list of uh, 50 compounds that you could you can explore or look at adding to your morning morning ritual for energy. So that's the first thing. I'll pause there, see if there's uh, any follow-up <laughs> questions. Not yet. I mean, I've got one that's on deck, but I'm going to let you get through your, through, through your takeaways before I hit you with this one because it's kind of out of left field. Okay. Well, I'll only mention two more takeaways. No, I'm only going to mention one more takeaway, actually. Oh, wow. Okay. Because I, I want folks to to check out the book to get the, the real comments of you. But one of the, the biggest takeaways that I add in the book is if you switch, and I've mentioned matcha as an alternative to coffee, I've also mentioned uh, turmeric. One of the things that people can benefit from is called cytocholine or CDP choline. And choline is naturally found in eggs. And it is phenomenal for improving blood flow to your brain to improve lateral thinking or creativity, but it's also great. You can take it in the morning and you're going to have um, the cognitive benefits that come with, with CDP choline, but the other, and, and, or you can just have six to eight eggs and get the same amount in the morning. But the other benefit from 300 milligrams of, of choline is, and if people go on Amazon and just look up CDP choline, um, they can, they can grab it there. I, I highly recommend reading the book first, like I said, 45 minute read to know what they're getting into. But then CDP choline is a big takeaway because it'll also improve. It's been uh, clinically proven to improve your sleep later that night. So it not only improves your creativity, improves your productivity and focus during the day, but it also will improve your sleep at night. And that's just, that's like, you know, a double whammy of, of, of a compound. There aren't many compounds that, that we know of that can improve your energy or improve your, improve your productivity and improve your sleep. And I think a lot of us take for granted sleep as well, especially in this day and age of trying to be overproductive or work two jobs or three jobs or be a little entrepreneur guy at night and uh, have a career during the day. Sleep Amen. can escape us quickly. <laughs> <laughs> sleep and and stress management it's um you know it's if there's one addiction that our society collectively is okay with encouraging it's ambition and and it's it's endless 
it's um you know it's we we encourage it just by saying things like man go out and get it go seize your dreams kill it crush it and and we read these these really fake stories of <laughs> of of people and it's the perfectly polished version of of where they got or how they got to where they are and it's and it is embellished and and or just filled with lies and i think that that is really destructive to your collective our collective efforts as as individuals because we read these stories and we measure ourselves against them we don't match up and that not only adds stress and anxiety but then we push ourselves to these very unnatural limits and and that adds stress and anxiety and so you get it you're getting it from both angles and it is a um yeah i think where i was 6 years ago i was just right in the pit of that with building my own company and having 50 55 employees at that time looking up to me and and i was i was about 2 years away from just a real paying for all of just taking on too much and burning it at both ends and even in those first two years of finding other compounds that can give me that same stimulant effect, I really did not, I didn't take it into, into the equation, the place of stress management, of getting great sleep, of thinking towards the long term and a sustainable approach to work. I really just thought in terms of these short bursts and not, and not having any clue the biological or uh, professional debt that builds up when you're just like, all right, let me just crunch one all-nighter. Let me do another all night. Let me work till 10 p.m. Let me try to go for 10 hours straight. And yeah, I fast forward to now and I'm I'm much more deliberate in in these medium and long-term goals and much more deliberate around my sleep and stress management. That's a huge takeaway that uh, just right there, just your your sleep and your stress management. You know, it's funny. My grandma used to tell me that when I was a kid. I'm like, oh, grandma, that's silly. That's that's what they said, you know, well, you were born in 1919, you, you know, all right. that's old. Right. Now we just pop a couple of no-dos and off we goes, you know? So, right. but, and then now many of us are paying the price for ignoring grandma's wise words. So <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it is really, uh, and I think we've had this, this, exp- and I think there's somewhat of a, there's this growing wave of receptivity to this message of, of productivity is, is more than just energy. One of the things that I, that I talk about in, in the book and a big insight around this space is, you know, I used to equate coffee or Red Bull or Monster Energy with getting things done. And, and that's obviously where uh, the companies want you to associate these things with, Starbucks with, you know, you're going to attack your day. But, uh, and it's, it is, no coincidence that Starbucks is, I mean, their, their latest innovation, the TV commercials right now are about Starbucks triple shot espresso. I mean, it's just, it's, it is like, it's just almost a parody of itself to where it's like, Hey, you know what we need to do? We need to add more caffeine into our drink. And I think we're collectively kind of waking up to this idea that it's uh, all right. Maybe that more caffeine, more coffee isn't actually what's needed. And, America, especially in the last thirty years, has been in a love affair with, with coffee. But now we're people are starting to starting to take a step back and saying, okay, holistically, when do I feel my best? It's definitely, we all know what it's like to drink one too many coffees, and we're kind of jittery. Where it's the opposite of productive or focused. We're, you know, we're anxious. But I think the the metaphor that that I began to think much more about and the insight around productivity was that it's more than just energy. It's also cognition, meaning, you know, focus, clarity of thought, creativity. It's also balance, meaning, you know, how, how can I be energetic and, uh, and be focused, but also not be stressed or not be anxious around some deadline or some goal. So it's energy it's cognition and it's, uh, and it is balanced. And it's like, if you and I were going to go on a road trip and we're going to, I don't know, LA from San Francisco, we can get there faster by having a bigger engine 
are having more more fuel in the tank, but we can also get there much faster if we if we remove boulders from the road. And anxiety, stress, especially in the world we live in today, where everybody has this kind of low grade pervasive uh, anxiousness with you know a phone with a million notifications or an email inbox that has you know endless amount of emails that keep coming in. I think we live in a world where we we have this low grade pervasive anxiety all around us. And that actually is a bigger inhibitor to us being productive than energy is than, you know, having the energy to get through 4 PM. It's uh, I think that that side of the equation, the cognitive, but also the balance or stress management side is I think wildly under discussed. See, and you can relate it in a multitude of ways, but if you look at it from even a mechanical perspective, the, the fastest cars on the planet they become fastest by the being the lightest, being the most efficient, right. being the most effective right. at what they do, generating the most power for that vehicle within the parameters of, if it's a race car, the race that they're in. There's all sorts of different races that are out there, and then right. there's all sorts of different race cars specifically designed for that type of race. You look at it from right. an athlete's perspective. Athletes don't drink two pots of coffee a day. You know, the, the mm-hmm. top of the chain, you think Michael Phelps drinks two coffee pots a day and then goes and swims? No. I think Floyd right. Mayweather does the same. No, none of them do it. Nobody at the most elite, effective levels go about it the way the most of our society does. And right. I think people are starting, I'm, I'm right there with you in the fact that I think people are starting to realize that. But they're it's, not sure how to change it. No, and I, and I think it, yeah, it's, I think there is the, you know, first step is the acknowledgement and curiosity. Then the second step is, is the information that really is, you know, a lot of these things. I remember when I first started diving into the research and just thought, oh, this must be really recent research. And, and then realized, now this has been Bacopa, which I mentioned, which can improve your memory up to 25% and, and compound that improvement over you know, 30 days or 90 days or, or a year. That's, that's a massive improvement. If, or if you can be 10%, 20% more productive each day, you know, that, that's not a small amount when you compound a 10% improvement over the course of, of a year, right. 20% improvement over the course of a year. And yeah, to, to your point, it's, um, well, one, I'll say this research is, you know, it's 30, 40 years old. Uh, for many of these these compounds, but two, I'll say, yeah, if Starbucks designed a Formula One car, it would it would look like a rocket, and uh, it would not be able to turn corners, right. and it would probably not be able to stop. Right, and that's and that is I, I love that you know extra color you added to that to the metaphor of the car. Actually, if we're going to try to get there as fast as we can, then it's going to be light, and it is. Uh, your four monster energy drinks. I don't, I doubt that that is actually lightening the load, even though it is giving you more energy, it's giving you more of a boost, but it probably is spiking your cortisol, spiking your stress uh, hormones. And, and you don't sound like a very stressed individual, but uh, for many of us that can lead to, I think, bigger barriers to productivity than, uh, than just wanting another hour or two of, of a stimulant type of uh, energetic effect. James, I'm a do as I say, not as I do kind of guy. All right. <laughs> well, it's, uh, you know, this stuff really is so powerful. And if people go to beyondcoffeebook.com, they can sign up and read the first two chapters for free, as well as get the list of things that I take each morning, including the CDB calling. But it's beyondcoffeebook.com. And I, you know, I would say this stuff is, is hard to transition over to, but it's, it really isn't, uh, and, and people. Some of the things you'll you'll notice an effect within within that first day. And everyone's different, but some of the things you'll notice within the first day. Some of them take seven or eight days to build, like the the stress management compounds like ashwagandha and rhodiola, which probably mean nothing to you. But if you go to beyondcoffeebook.com, uh, put in your email address, you'll get to read the first two chapters for free to see what this stuff is all about, as well as immediately you just get sent the list of things that I take each morning. Cool deal. Well, I'm definitely going to try the matcha bar. As soon as we hang up here, I am going to go order a case. Then I'm going to come back and do a Facebook Live. So 
Uh, I do that every oh, night. It's a lot of fun. So, James, I can't thank you enough for joining me. Give me a second. Let me wrap this thing up, and I'll be right back with you, okay? Okay. All right. Hey, everybody. Thank you once again for listening to another awesome, and I do mean awesome, episode of the Readily Random Podcast. James Bashera comes in, and he sheds all sorts of light on the things that we're starting to hear about. And, and I think most of us want to know more about it. I know I do. I know, you know... I listen to Joe Rogan quite a bit. I shouldn't be billing somebody else's podcast unless they're a guest. And old Joe's not going to be on this show anytime soon. But he's big on the nootropics. And uh, he's also big on mushrooms, but of a different variety. But my point is, is that there are alternatives out there. And I'm slowly but surely making my way that direction. And uh, it may be of benefit to you to do the same thing. I mean, I can't tell you how to live, obviously. But I can't ask you to please go out there and check out James's book. So if you have any questions or concerns, drop me a note. And as always, thanks for listening to the Readily Random Podcast. I'll see you next week. Hey, you could be